And in the finale for Howard's storyline, after they humiliate him, the bowling balls, the hookers and everything. And then finally, he gets his pants basically pulled down in his own office, humiliated, reputationally destroyed. Mm -hmm. They win. But when Howard comes back to their apartment to let them know, you know, I know what's going on. I'm going to get you. He has come to a spot where he's like, that's all right. It, what he says is so true. The writers gave Howard and me such a gift to be able to come in and ask what I think the audience was wondering. Why are you doing this? Yes. Why are you doing this? What's, wh why are you doing this? Is it because of this? Is it because of Chuck? The cornfield? Like what? Yeah. What possibly can think? And then Howard gets I think, speak for the audience as well, saying like, you guys are morally bankrupt. This behavior... There's nothing fun about it. And I think that's a moment that the writers, um, the writers allow the audience to sort of uh, shake themselves out of, to be like, right, who am I rooting for? Why am I rooting for these guys? Howard has a point, right? He really yeah. has a point. Oh, look at him. Oh my God, after we found out about his wife, oh, he's human just like me. Oh, yeah. things are really bad for him. Look at him. Howard's going to pick himself back up. Oh my gosh, he's laying it out doesn't matter how long he's going to get them back and then the candle blows the second time oh and the audience and it right and that's the action the audience goes oh, what oh shit i forgot about oh no yep that was my reaction right yeah you're like oh no and they don't let it draw out it's not like three minutes of monologues or blah 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 it's like 30 seconds and what a the one of my favorite lines they ever gave Howard was in that moment where he says, me, I just want to talk to my lawyers. And Howard all of a sudden is like, you know, doing, um, doing a, a stand up, stand up comedy. He's like, oh, yeah, you want some advice? You got to get better lawyers. But I'm both. <laughs> and he's yeah. the only one. He's on an island of not knowing. And he finally has a bit of perception. And then it's too late. It's so sudden. It's so awful. And literally. The consequences, the unintended consequences of Jimmy and Kim's actions are laid and made manifest, laid at their feet. Uh, well, and then the credits roll and everybody screams at the television. Oh, <laughs> you know, it caught me so off guard, but that's what would actually ha happen in real life. It wouldn't be this dragged out scene. In real life, you see a, a criminal like Lalo and you're in his way because he's thinking in his head, this guy gets out, I'm done. Boom. That's it. That's how he lays them out. But that whole death scene, I read that that um, Ray Seahorn and Bob Odenkirk, they didn't know about that. It was kept a secret for a while. What was the whole story behind that? Oh, well, you know what? Uh, in the beginning of the season, I got a call from Vince and, and Melissa and Peter Gould. And when, just as an actor note, when the three executive producers of your show call you before you begin filming the season, you're not sure if you want to pick up the phone. But at this point, I had a, I had a feeling and they said, hey, uh, Vince said, hey, guess what? The writers found a really good thing for Howard. They're so excited. It brings the two worlds together. And I said, and he goes, and I just wanted to let you know that you're going to be able to go on vacation a little bit earlier this season than usual. And I was like, OK, don't tell me how. Don't tell me when. And, and so every week I would get uh, the episodes and read through. And then I started convincing myself that maybe it wasn't going to happen, that they changed their mind. And I got that episode seven. Um, and to your point, Ray and I would, Ray, Bob, and I lived together. And we would constantly say to one another, do you know what's going to happen to your character? I'd say, anybody told you anything? And I would say, nope, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I got really good at saying that. Because after Vince told me that, he said, he said, you know, forget it. Forget that we said anything. I didn't tell my wife. I didn't tell anybody. I got real good over six seasons of Saul talking about Saul without talking about any of it. You know what I mean? Yep. So then we're doing the seasons. We're shooting and da 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 And just like we normally do, we get an episode, we read it. So Ray reads episode seven and she gets to the end and she calls up Peter and Vince and she goes, oh my God, did you guys tell Patrick? Have you told him yet? And Vince is like, oh yeah, hell, we told him like five months ago. And she called me. <laughs> She was like, what? You asshole. You didn't tell me. <laughs> That's too so funny. You know, I, I didn't want her to know. And I also think even when I was reading the script, I, I was like, oh, look at Howard. He's doing all this stuff. Chatty Howard. He's giving him a lot of scenes. This is it's more than I ever did in the whole, whole show, right? Yeah. Where in my, in my naive actor mind, I'm thinking, as I'm going through the script, I'm like, 
well, there's not many pages left for anything to happen. This is amazing. This is amazing. So again, it, it, it plays out on the screen just like it reads. Uh-huh. Bottom of the page, candle blows again. Huh? Top of the page, Lalo enters. Half a page later, end of show. And you're like, uh-huh. yeah, mind blowing. Wow. So I put that down. I'm like, oh, wow, that's it. That's the end. There it is, literally in black and white. Crazy. End of, you know, 10 years of work, basically.